Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're tuning in today. I'm I'm sorry about yesterday. We have a new uh, circuit visitor. We have a new uh, Winkle structure. So it doesn't work for me to um, go live on Winkle days. Um, previously, we always met in Farmington because it was centrally located. Um, but we're no longer only meeting in Farmington. Yesterday, we were in Pagosa Springs. Um, then next, we'll be in Gallup. Then we're going to go to Page, Arizona. So we're going to get back to traveling around to visit um, pastors in their home congregations. Um, they were they were in Durango uh, last time. So unfortunately, I won't be able to do Live for Five on those days anymore. Uh, in addition... Um, I'm going on vacation with my family, and so uh, next week we will not have Live for Five. This Friday we won't have Live for Five, and possibly a week from Tuesday we won't have Live for Five. But all, all that information will we'll come back at you again, so um, you don't have to worry about that. Good morning, Bev and Todd. Um Let's see, I can't always see who's all on, Todd and Bev. Um, welcome this morning. Let's make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Uh, pull out the YouVersion Bible app and let's take a look at our verse of the day. It comes from John chapter 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Ah, oh, man. Uh, John loves light imagery in his gospel, but one of the reasons is because light and darkness is a pervasive theme through scripture, period. The first thing God creates is light. So there's a lot of theology in scripture wrapped around this point. Um, I was uh, leading the Bible study for Winkle yesterday, and so I was preparing. We're working our way through the Old Testament, and we were looking at Exodus uh, chapters 10 through 15 yesterday. Well, at the end of chapter 10, you have the plague, the ninth plague, the plague of darkness. And it was dark for three days uh, amongst all the Egyptians, but the Israelites had light in their homes. Everything else was dark. I can't even imagine it. He, God caused darkness. The sun didn't shine and no one left their home because you couldn't see anything. They couldn't light a candle. Light is life without electricity in an ancient Near Eastern world. There is so much to be said for the theology around them going home and lighting a candle at the end of the day because the sun had gone down and the only way you could get light was lighting it artificially in your home with a candle. So to sit, for Jesus to say, I am the light of the world is like saying you're the sun that shines every morning. And the other interesting thing is the Greek word he uses here for I am is to say there isn't another one. There is no other light than me. Jesus is saying I am as significant to your livelihood as the sun. Looking back at the beginning of this chapter, we read that Christ enters the, tomb, the, the temple early in the morning. It's Christ's custom to do this. He takes the opportunity where from whatever source might be at hand so that those who are eager for the truth might be carried to greater things. So as the sun is now rising in the morning, he takes the opportunity from that light which was beaming forth to reveal that he is the true light and as significant as the sun. Now, he does the same thing when he talks about heavenly bread, about living water, about weddings. There is no doubt 
that Christ spoke many other things uh, just like what we have here. At the end of John's gospel, he said, I could have told you many other stories, but these are the most weighty ones that you need to come to the realization that Jesus is the true light in this case. As he revealed himself on previous days, so now he speaks freely without fear of the Pharisees. I am the true son. I am the light of the world. And then we carry the light to the world. So now that we have this beacon and source, we carry it to the people around us. The I am statements of Jesus, particularly in the Gospel of John, are are weighty, they're heavy, and they're not meant to just scream through quickly. We we have all these, these idioms in mind when we read through Scripture. Jesus is the door, he's the light, he's the bread, he's the vine, he's all these things. But each of them is for us to, to wade in slowly. I encourage you, when reading through Scripture, to consider the illustration of light and darkness. Go back to John chapter 1 and read through the beginning of uh, the Gospel of John. Uh, John chapter 1 verse 5 in the language of darkness. And what John is evoking by later in chapter 8, 12, telling you Jesus says, I am the light of the world. The scriptures flatly call natural humans spiritually and physically living in darkness. And the light comes. It's, it's, it's so heavy. And it's why when you're talking with unbelievers, they, they, they don't understand why you have this joy despite not always being happy about life circumstances. Because we have the light of the world and we know we don't live in darkness. Now, when we put the metaphors aside, we get to say, I know that my future is confidently secure and I rest in the promises of Christ. And that's a joyful place to be that not a lot of people in the world have. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have made us new in your Son, giving us the true light that shines in the darkness. And and when the metaphors fail us, we know that you have promised that we rest with you in your presence for eternity. No more pain, no more tears, no more mourning, but the joy of your presence and the reunion with all who trust in your promises as well. Give us comfort this day in this wonderful news. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, one last reminder, um, I will be on uh, vacation next week. Um, So we won't have Live for Five this Friday, next week, and then the following Tuesday possibly. Depends on how how, how long it takes us to get back. Um, But... Uh, Blessings to you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. We'll see you soon.